Welcome to World Med School. My name is Jeremiah Chakaya. I'm a chess physician and a chief research officer at the Kenya Medical Research Institute in Nairobi, Kenya. In this micro lecture, I'm going to talk about uh, symptoms and signs in patients with tuberculosis. It's important that all healthcare workers and patients and communities adopt ideal TB behavior to optimize treatment outcomes in patients with tuberculosis. At the community and individual level, it is important that uh, people who develop symptoms of TB notice those symptoms and urgently seek care for them. When patients then present to healthcare workers, healthcare workers should recognize those symptoms and institute appropriate investigations. Once the diagnosis of tuberculosis has been made, treatment that is appropriate must be rapidly instituted and the patient must be supported to adhere to treatment until completion. This ensures that treatment outcomes are optimized and this forms the current basis for TB care and control in all public health programs. Tuberculosis can affect any part of the body. However, 80% of all tuberculosis occurs in the lung. 20% of tuberculosis occurs outside the lung and the common sites include the pleural membrane, what is called TB pleurisy, usually presenting with a pleural effusion, the pericardium, what is called TB pericarditis, usually presenting with a pericardial effusion, TB or lymph nodes, abdominal TB, TB that can affect the genitourinary system, the central nervous system, and bone and joint disease. The symptoms of tuberculosis can broadly be divided into two categories. Those symptoms that are due to a generalized systemic disturbance and those symptoms that are associated with disease or pathology in a specific site or organ. The symptoms associated with a generalized systemic disturbance include fever, night sweats, loss of weight, tiredness, loss of appetite and many other things including secondary amenorrhea. It's very rare that patients will have TB without one or more of these symptoms. Organ-specific tuber uh, tuberculosis is very important and all healthcare workers must be able to recognize the common symptoms of tuberculosis. The lung, for example, is the most common site of TB disease and it is the only site where TB can then be transmitted from one individual to another. It is therefore important that tuberculosis of the lung is rapidly recognized and promptly treated because this cuts transmission of TB. The specific symptoms of pulmonary TB include cough, sputum production, hemoptysis, chest pain, and shortness of breath. Next slide. Although cough is a very common symptom of tuberculosis, Cough is a very non-specific symptom. It occurs in many other diseases of the lung. In tuberculosis, the longer the cough has been there, the higher the likelihood that uh, uh, that cough could be due to TB. In many public health programs and in many patients who eventually end up being diagnosed with TB, characteristically the cough has been present for more than two to three weeks when the diagnosis of TB is made. And oftentimes, this cough is accompanied with fever, weight loss, and nitrates, which therefore increases the likelihood of TB. Cough alone, therefore, may not, in fact, trigger investigations for TB, but in the presence of fever, weight loss, and nitrates, uh, the chances that one has TB tends to increase. It is difficult to distinguish primary from post-primary TB on the basis of symptoms of TB alone. Next slide. Just to summarize the key symptoms of pulmonary TB, 
half occurs in about 70 to 90 percent of patients with TB, weight loss in up to 75 percent of patients with pulmonary TB, hemoptysis in up to 30 percent of patients, fatigue or malaise is a very common symptom occurring in up to 60 percent of patients, fever will occur in up to half of patients. The presence of fever, wasting, and malaise tend to be a lot more commoner in patients who are HIV infected. Next slide. The symptoms of extrapulmonary TB, as already been mentioned, will depend on the site of disease. So, for example, pleural TB, presenting as pleural effusion, often presents with pleuritic chest pain and unproductive cough and shortness of breath. TB of the pericardium will present with fever, night sweating, fatigue and weight loss, chest pain, breathlessness, and if there has been cardiac decompensation because of problems with cardiac feeling and emptying, there can be leg swelling. Next slide. Tuberculosis involving the lymph nodes usually presents with unilateral painless enlargement of lymph nodes. These nodes initially tend to be firm and discrete but later they become matted and fluctuant and they may actually openly drain pus. The common sites of TB of lymph nodes include the cervical area, the mesenteric area, intrathoracic nodes, and in the inguinal area. In HIV infected individuals, it's very common to see multifocal involvement of lymph nodes. In the central nervous system, tuberculosis can present as a meningitic process. The symptoms tend to be non-specific and variable. They include headache, fever and vomiting. Photophobia and neck stiffness, which are very common symptoms in other forms of bacterial meningitis, is a rare. Uh, these are rare symptoms and tend to occur very late uh, in the disease. Cranial nerve pulses are a little more common in patients with TB meningitis, most often involve the third, the sixth, and the seventh nerve. The presence of confusion, coma, and seizures uh, tend to be poor prognostic uh, symptoms. Next slide. In cerebral tuberculomas, patients often represent with seizures, headaches, fever, weightless, and progressive mental changes that may take days or weeks uh, to, to evolve. Next slide. Abdominal TB is a disease generally of younger people. The most common site is the ileocecal area, but any part of the gastrointestinal tract can be involved. That's include the esophagus, the gastroduodenal area, uh, the colonic areas, and the rectal and anal areas. The symptoms of tuberculosis in the GIT are many, and they include fever and abdominal pain. You may end up with alternating constipation and diarrhea. There may be weight loss, anorexia, and malaise. There may be ulceration in the upper GI or in the lower GI. And uh, when advanced, there may be bowel obstruction and bowel perforation. There may be classical symptoms of uh, malabsorption and patients may bleed. Both upper GI or lower GI uh, bleeding may occur. Next slide. In the urinary tract, a lot of patients with urinary tract TB may present with nothing specific. However, if there are specific symptoms are in the urinary tract, these include dysuria, nocturia, suprapubic pain, urinary frequency. When the urine of individuals with urinary TB is examined, often there is pus cells in there or persistent pyuria. There may also be hematuria. Epididymal TB classically will present with scrotal pain and swelling, while prostate TB may present with dysuria and urinary frequency. And when urine is examined from these patients, it may show hematuria and hemospermia. Next slide. The physical signs in patients now turning on now onto the signs of tuberculosis. Physical examination uh, associated with TB will of course depend on the organ that is involved. Many patients with tuberculosis in fact may not have any specific signs of uh, disease. 
and there's no physical sign that is specific to TB. This absence of any significant physical finding does not exclude active TB. And this is much more of uh, much more truer in patients who are immunocompromised or those in extremes of age, for example, the very young or the very old. Next slide. The signs of TB will differ according to the tissues involved, like I already said. So, for example, in the lung, there may be pulmonary rays and or bronchial breast sounds. Uh, if you have lymph node enlargement, like we have already said, they may be palpable and fluctuant lymph nodes. There may be cranial nerve pulses for TB meningitis. There may be motor sensory deficits. And if you have uh, epididymal TB, you get scrotal masses. Next slide. It's very critical when you are um, planning to introduce TB preventive therapy in people living with HIV, which is an important intervention in, in people living with HIV, uh, that you develop a symptom uh, a screening process that is able to help, especially public health programs, to identify those who are likely to have TB and therefore to avoid giving such patients uh, non-curative uh, TB treatment. More recently, research data has shown that a four symptom screen, uh, including the absence of cough of any duration, the absence of fever, the absence of night sweating, and the absence of loss of weight, that this symptom complex has a very high sensitivity for T TB of almost 80%, but a specificity of about 50%, but the most useful thing about this symptom complex is that it has got a very high negative predictive value of nearly 98%. So the absence of uh, of these four symptoms uh, should make any healthcare worker confidently introduce TB preventive therapy without too much concern that they may be in fact missing tuberculosis. In conclusion, therefore, TB care and control begins with recognition of symptoms of TB. Early TB case detection is essential to be able to cut transmission and reduce the risk of death and long-term complications of TB. Thank you for studying with World Med School.